Hi guys, Mr. John here. In this video I want to talk about the schematics for those little circuit boards that I installed in the ATX power supply to turn it into a rather nice battery charger. Now, some of you requested, sorta, <laughs> that uh, what about creating a one PCB that contains both circuits and in easy EDA. Well, that is of course doable, but the problem is that the PCB PCBs that I create, I create in layouts in a software called Sprint Layout. And I love that software for a very specific reason. Because just like name suggests, which is quite rare actually, it is really fast to design PCBs with it. Because like this stuff, look at it. Is it complicated? You want to say it is very complicated. No, it's not. So what I do before I design this, I just take some part. I don't even take um, some parts. I will just have a pencil and a piece of paper, do a rough sketch on paper, how the parts will lay down and uh, rough track layouts. Then I'm gonna go, then I go into the software, choose proper footprints, put them around the areas they should be in and do that thing in scale, basically following my sketch. Designing PCBs that way is very easy. I have found it quite actually, quite and quite fascinating how easy it is. Previously I have used Eagle. Eagle is an excellent, as excellent software, but to be honest, a bit of overkill for the project like this, because by the time you will be done choosing the right parts with the associated footprint and bada bada bada, I'm gonna be done already. Because I'm gonna have a sketch and by the time you will choose all the parts and create a schematic, I'll be basically having a layout that I'm gonna take few revisions and uh, make it so I like it. Again, I'm not, I will share you the files, I will go and uh, throw them into the Dropbox folder, I will put the actual files for the sprint layout and I will also put the um, uh, maybe you are lazy and you don't want to modify the board you want it uh, maybe you want it to replicate it just like I did so for those of you who don't want to download the software and want to replicate the board as is I'm gonna also include a PDF where I, to which I will export the image in scale just make sure when you print that PDF out choose a real scale in the printer settings and you'll be fine. Now, those boards. There are two of them, as you saw in the last video. One of them contains a little bug boost converter around MC34063. Really simple little beast. All that it is for is to create a negative rail for the op-amp to operate reliably and not on the brim of a work in a it of its working ability. Very simple, you can see all the values there. The input cap can be highly microfarads, 47 microfarads, whatever your choice. Really simple, seek it from the data sheet, nothing to talk about. This is very simple too. This little DC to DC converter and this little open thing is located on the same board. So that's one board that you saw. The board on the left, closer to the fan, if you watch the video. First stage is just an inverting amplifier. That picks the voltage of the shunt, which is right here, as you can see. Here is your transformer, primary of it, secondary, your choke. And you can see where the shunt is. Usually, there is no shunt here, the shunt is here. From the negative of the capacitor to your output. But throwing it here has an advantage that the voltage on it does not get 
it doesn't get subtracted. Uh, you won't have voltage drop on the output, basically, because when you have it after, from this point to your output, the circuit will regulate the voltage across the capacitor. And if you have current flowing through the resistor, you will have voltage drop across it, and uh, the voltage on your actual output won't be the same, even though the circuit regulates the voltage precisely on the capacitor. Not that it is critical in this application, but I chose to do it this way. So basically, very simple little inverting amplifier. You can see 0.1 ohm, 10k, 1k, 10k over 1k, that's the gain of inverting amplifier. Bam, you have 10. And then you, what do you know? If you have 1 amp here, you have 0.1 volts. 1 amp times 0.1 ohms, 0.1 volts. 0.1 volts times 10, you have 1 volt. You fit it into the DVM and bam, you have 1 volt per 1 amp. The voltage that you see on the DVM now is the current. So that's how I implemented the emitter very easily. Then you have a little buffer that goes into the feedback point. Now I could have drawn the divider right here, but that's a bad idea. Because in the actual layout, I've done it a little bit differently. Here you can see the chunk of TL494, pin 16. Pin 16 and pin 15 are, non are inputs of the error amplifier. 16 is non-inverting, 15 is inverting. Inverting is con gets connected to some voltage reference. Pin 14 is a 5 volt built-in reference of the chip. So basically right here I have half Z. 2.5 volts and here I have a divider which will has a transfer function just like this one but with different values 0.5 so if I have in order for the chip to regulate it will start uh, decreasing the current decreasing the voltage and thus regulating the current when the voltage here will get to the same amount as here remember here is two and a half volts so the voltage here has to be 2.5 volts, and we know the transfer function, so the voltage here has to be 5 volts. 5 volts gets connected right here, which is the same voltage as it is here, so you go, it is going to regulate around 5 amps, which is the desired value for a 55 amp hour battery. Okay. And why did I draw the... And why did I draw the divider right here? Well, because you can put like divider here and then have this line to the pin 16 going from the circuit board all the way to your TL494 and that's a very bad idea. This input is a high impedance input. Having a large length of wire flopping in the breeze pretty much when a high impedance input is just asking for trouble. So make sure that this connection right here is kept short. What I did is I just connected 10k resistor from pin 16 to nearest ground and connected a resistor, a through hole resistor, one leg clipped short and connected to pin 16, heat shrink over it and then you can have this lead which goes to the feedback rather long it won't be in so much of a trouble because if the noise is gonna get picked up here it's gonna be attenuated by half here not the greatest idea keep those leads short but it's not as critical here as it is here now to the protection here you can see again the output stage you can here you can see your transformer choke capacitor bada 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 Fuse, 8M fuse, not really necessary, but you know, better to be safe. <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry, right? 0.1 ohm 5 watt shunt, which gets fed in again into here, amplified, and this signal is gonna get used in this circuit too, as you can see right here. Now this little bodginess is what's located on the other board, which was on the right, if you watch the previous video. It contains three transistors, you can see what they are, generic PNP, generic NPN, 
generic and general MOSFET. Nothing, to, nothing really fascinating at all. This little beastie is a TL494. L, TL431, sorry. Adjustable voltage reference. So, what the circuit is? Well, that's basically just a MOSFET which gets turned on through here and that's that through this LED, through this 2.2K resistor and it's on, right? So what happens next? Well, nothing if you do it, if you do everything right but if you do it wrong, that is if you connect positive the battery to this point and not this point you basically have the battery like this all right then you will have what will happen when you do this is b plus is going positive output is going to be connected to the negative of the battery and then say you did not connect yet the positive of the battery to my negative output of the charger and you can see that the voltages of the battery and the voltages of the charger are going to add up and you will have quite a spike through the transistor but it manages to handle it but it's still a better idea to connect the battery before beforehand and then plug it in into the mains that way you eliminate the spike but what happens if you do that there will be huge current flowing the current of the battery is gonna go like through this turned on MOSFET into the ground into here through the resistor through the diodes and back into the battery this will create the voltage drop on the resistor on our shunt the TL494 is gonna see that because it's gonna have the signal coming from this amplifier and it will decrease the duty cycle to say zero basically this is gonna be this winding is gonna be nothing but a piece of wire with no voltage generated by itself but then still now you have just the battery voltage but it is more than enough to push the current still the current still flows the same way or through this diode doesn't matter and you have still a high a voltage drop across this shunt well this scene is still operating and it provides some an amplified voltage across the shunt and when that voltage here reaches about 7 volts or so uh, depends on the values of these resistors TL431 will conduct will pull the no base of the PNP to ground sure for a short little time a little bit but then this circuit with two transistors which is a, a latch circuit as soon as this transistor starts to conduct it's gonna throw current into the base of this guy which in turn will pull current from the base of this guy and the circuit will latch up like very fast very nice and when it does that at the same time that it latches itself up, it's all, this transistor also discharges the gate quite aggressively. You can see no resistor here whatsoever. There will be a very fast turn off here. This transistor will yank the gate of the MOSFET to the same potential that its source is very very fast and prevent damage. So that's a very cool approach i think so at least it works works multiple times i've tried to burn it and i could not i tried to as you saw in the previous video connected the battery after i plugged it in nothing happens well the sparks fly because the capacitor gets discharged basically again you have the circuit connected like this here negative the battery you didn't connect the positive yet you have say 14 volts on the output of the supply 12 volts here you have 26 volts between those points 
now that you connect those basically what sparks the most is this badass capacitor here which is charged to the full output because the circuit was just open a few seconds ago and the MOSFET is gonna see a nice surge of current which is just discharge current of this capacitor the actual output of the power supply is gonna fall down fairly quick there will be a spike of current, a spike of voltage here across this shunt it's gonna get amplified the TL484 is gonna say oh no 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 you won't do that it's gonna decrease its duty cycle on the output the voltage generated by the winding is gonna drop to some ridiculous value that ain't gonna do any harm but the, again still the battery is voltage is still more than enough to forward bias this output rectifiers and cause excessive current but then again that keeps the voltage here rising until the voltage on the amplified output that gets fed up here gets high enough so you have 2.5 volts right here then TL431 turns on turns the latch on which latches up and stays in that position as long as a power is applied that's that pin v what the VCC is VCC is a pin 12 of the TL494 it is around 13 volts or so normal operation for that normal operation you have to delete one diode uh, in the ATX power supply there is a diode that it is, that is located be between the TL pin 12 of the TL494 and this node so basically you have a diode going to pin 12 what you need to do is to break this connection because if you don't do that the voltage on the pin 12 is gonna be 25 volts or more quite fascinating how that happens because here you have 14 volts but here you have like 25 volts if you feed this if you connect the capacitor right here to ground that's by the way the little tricky little <laughs> feature how the circuit in the in that weird ass charger operated the voltage here has a lot of spikes which are very thin they don't last much but they're pretty darn big in amplitude so that's how the, the other circuit in the manufacture factory made charger managed to turn the mosfet on all right enough babble I think I told you enough. You saw all the circuits. All right. I told you what to do to not do any harm to the circuitry. Just desolder this diode, completely clip it out, desolder one leg, cut the trace, whatever. Just make sure that this circuit is broke. That's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.